only man has been given this opportunity to realize brahman because man is the best creation of brahman he is very happy with man unfortunately now he is not very happy because we are not behaving according to what he wanted we are doing as we please we have forgotten the goal of life is realization of brahman we are running behind all kinds of maya that's why he is unhappy so once in a while he is going to shake the boat rock the boat and make you think what are we doing here so this is brahman's idea and be devoted and dedicated to that idea of brahman you have no fear for so ever fourth one it says iha chet ashakat bodhum prak sharirasya visrasah tatah sargeshu lokeshu sharirattvaya kalpate it says chet if iha in this world itself ashakat you are capable of what bodhum realizing what before prak sharirasya visrasah before the body is visrasa dropped away prak sharirah before that time comes your body is gone the manav janma is over before such a time comes if you can realize this brahman in this world as you are here in the matya loka then you are free otherwise tatah sargeshu lokesho sharirattvaya kalpate otherwise you go to different different lokas sargeshu lokesu or nice nice lokas only sarga means beautiful ni sarga vise sargeshu lokesu nice lokas only where people go with some merits sharirattvaya kalpate for the sake of another body you will be going so we have heard about the lokas haven't we bhur bhuva swaha mahajanah tapa satyam abhav and adala vitala sutala dala dala satala mahatala patala below Lokas means what experience is loka. In your home, when you are living in peace, your home is swarga loka. The moment there is a disharmony and discord and fights, you say, "I am living in a living hell." So there is no separate hell and heaven. Even where you are now, your mind is not at peace. That itself is hell for you. So idea is that if you realize this before you drop the body, the similar thought comes in Bhagavad Gita also. It says that chaknoti iha eva. yah the one who realizes it now sodhum and controls before the body drops away prak sharira vimokshanat before the body is dropped away somebody who realizes right here and controls what kama krodha udbhavam vegam this kama and krodha come at great speed so they don't come slowly announcing tomorrow morning i am the anger i'll meet you at 9 am at your home and then i will do this in kama doesn't tell at 11 pm tonight i am coming udbhavam vegam immediately it comes so those sodhum those who can control this learn to control it such shaknoti the same ashakat it says the word here there also shaknoti ih eva yah sodhum prak sharira vimokshanat kama krodha udbhavam vegam sa yuktah sa sukhi narah it says the one who realizes that he has to control this kama krodha and the line behind mother matsara and all those people the one who is able to control them before the body drops off such a person alone is a yukta a adept and such a person alone can live in peace and happiness this similar thought comes in bhagavad gita the same thought here before your body falls off you must realize this now when can this body fall off does anybody know does anybody know that tomorrow or day after or 10 years later and where it will fall off anybody anybody knows while you are walking or you are sleeping while you are eating who knows nobody knows at least you don't know so if you don't put effort now and here what is the use it says this is the idea and the next shloka makes it extremely clear that if you don't do this now the first shloka says you will go to different different lokas so you will say so what let me go to different lokas then i will come back again i will get another body and then i will continue this journey no 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 yatha karma yatha shrutam yoni manye prapadyante sthanu manye anusanyanti suppose you become a tree then then i cannot realize brahman yes so start become tree then from tree you will become some animal from animal continue one full loop you have come back again so you don't know yatha karma yatha shrutam and all the other lokas where you are, will end up after this you don't know what's there so the idea of this shloka is very powerful it says 
in this body before this human body goes away wake up and realize this self because after that based on your karma and shrutam because you have not realized brahman so you are still bound by the laws of karma you may end up in anything you may end up in an animal body you may end up in insect body you may end up even being a tree or a stone and never again you will be able to come back to this beautiful human life from where you can reach brahman no other species is given to realize brahman not even gods you say gandharvas devas and pitrus no they are not that was the next shloka is going to tell you it says yatha adarshe tathatmani yatha swapne tatha pitru loke yathapsu pariva dadrshe tatha gandharva loke chhaya tap yoriva brahma loke so we'll break this what it means is that now he is telling which are the different lokas and why it is so difficult to realize brahman in other lokas other than this mrityu loka you may think gods are very powerful they can fly across the sky they can bring rains and thunder they can do so many things but truth is that they can do all that but they cannot realize brahman that is not given to them see a human being may not be able to do all those so to say powerful things but for human being it is given to realize brahman this is the idea so he says in this body when you are this knowledge of brahman is as clear to you as a reflection in a clear mirror yatha adarshe in the mirror how you can see your own reflection that clearly you can see brahman when you are in the body it says means that knowledge is very clear if that mirror of the mind is clear clean brahman will reflect there it says it's an analogy it's a upama a simile to be used so it says as you can see your reflection clearly in a mirror so also you can realize this truth in this world without any confusion but in pitruloka if you land up means you have died now you become a pitru it means you are the preta and you are landed up in prithuloka in prithuloka realizing truth is like seeing a dream you may think you have realized the truth but you have not realized it in a dream nothing is clear we don't even remember sometimes when we wake up from a dream what did we see so in prithuloka even if you have realized brahman you may forget about realizing brahman it may go back again to the same ignorance and you will again end up in the same so in like dream nothing remains real nothing remains like that in pitruloka if you land up after death and you think no no there i will sit and do meditation and realize brahman please know that there realizing brahman is as if you realize something in a dream in a dream you are not the king you are not a beggar like that if you realize brahman in pitruloka you have not realized brahman at all it is not clear at all that that loka and what else is there he says no no if i still better than my pitrus i am like a good ending up with the gods uh, you know with gods and heavens where people of greater merits go he says yatha apsu pariva dadrshe tatha gandharva loka then there is a gandharva loka which is in devatas where do these gandharvas live they live in gandharva loka which is deva loka but their problem is what they are always busy in their dance and singing tava that's why tavai vah tav nritya geeta because he knows this nritya geeta people are so lost in themselves they won't listen to anything so these gandharvas are always lost in their own mind that is why gandharvas are very very fickle minded they say very emotional so in gandharva loka you think you will realize brahman L- listen my child realizing brahman in gandharva loka is like seeing your reflection in water if water keeps moving your reflection also keeps moving you can't clearly see still water is not possible because gandharva's mind is very fickle so what happens in a moving water you can't see your reflection likewise in gandharva loka if you want to realize brahman it will be as good as seeing your reflection in a moving water in water which is not still so you will not realize brahman it is what is saying and then only place you can really know brahman clearly is brahma loka brahma loka it means where prajapati brahma not the brahman because brahman has no loka brahma loka is that satya loka mahajana tapa satyam the highest loka is called brahma loka or satya loka in that loka it's very clear how clear it is like shadow and light in brahma loka alone this idea of brahman and the jagat is so clear like shadow and light but that loka is the highest loka to go there only you have to do enough and more efforts in this loka how many yagnas yagas and pujas and parihara as per the shastras to go to brahma loka like trinachiketa agni all that if you do you will go to brahma loka there is brahman is very concept is clear but you are so lazy that in this human birth you don't want to realize brahman you think you will put efforts go to brahma loka and then realize brahman forget it this is the sarcasm this is the idea 
in this body here, if you realize Brahman, it's as clear as seeing your reflection in a mirror. It's so obvious, without any problem. If you go to Pitruloka, die, then it is like seeing a dream. I have realized Brahman, but you have not realized Brahman. If you go to Gandharvaloka because of better merits, your mind will be so fickle and busy with enjoyments of the Swarga. You remember there? Swarga loke na bhayam kinchan nasti na datratam na jaraya vibeti ubhe ashna pipase ubhe tirtva. You have finished your eating and drinking happily and shoka adiko modate Swarga loka. You are basically going to Swarga loka for what? To enjoy life. So are you going to be thinking of Brahman there? You will be thinking, I have done so much good, now it's time for me to enjoy life in Swarga. So where thinking of Brahman will happen there? So in that loka, trying to see Brahman is like trying to see your reflection in water which is not still. The only place where it is very clear is in Brahma loka. But to reach Brahma loka, the amount of effort that you have to put, better you put that effort in this world to realize Brahman. This is what he is trying to say. In this world means again he has told, Prakshari rasya visrasaha, before your body falls off. And you don't know when your body is going to fall off. That's what one, somebody said. But at least Parikshita knew seven days later he's going to die. And what did he do? Next seven days, he spent every single minute listening to Shuka's discourse on Krishna Leelas. The Bhagavatam came about like that. And after seventh day, he died. He, he couldn't save himself because nobody can change the death. Then what happened? But he died a peaceful death. He died liberated. Otherwise, he would have died in fear. But he got died in a liberated mind. He had no fear while dying. So, yatha karma yatha shrutam. Because he heard all the beautiful stories of Krishna, of Bhagavatam. And karma is what? He sat and meditated on this. So, therefore, he attained Krishna. So, that is the idea of realizing Brahman now and here. Don't wait to go to Pitruloka and Gandharva Loka and Brahma Loka. That much effort if you are putting to go to Brahma Loka, as well put efforts to realize Brahman here itself. What is the point in doing that then? So do it now. That is why it's so important. Now is most important. Present is omnipresent. What you do now is all that is in your hand. Tomorrow we have not seen. Yesterday is already gone. All that is which is there is today and now. So don't delay is what the uh, idea of these shlokas are. Before this body disappears, you never know when it will disappear. Pancha bhautika maina, durbala maina kayambu. It is a very weak body. We don't know when it will fall. Therefore, now and here, work hard, realize Brahman and don't delay and postpone for another day. You know, there is no another day. You may die any day. So better not take chance and do as everything that is required in order to realize Brahman here and now. That is the purpose of the shlokas. Don't wait for another loka, another birth, another yoni. We never know what's coming our way next. The next one shloka is Indriyanam prithak bhavam udaya asta mayau chayat prithak utpadya mana nam matva adhiro na So how do we deal with our indriyas in the world which is right now we are in? He says, know that all these indriyas which are there, prithak, they are different from the truth. The truth from which they are udayam astau chayat. They are born and they disappear. Like the waves are born of the ocean and disappear into the ocean. Like the indriyas are born and they die or disappear into the same truth. But they are different from the truth because they are illusions. And we get stuck with the illusion of the indriyas. And how are these indriyas? Shobhava, Jaryanti, Tejaha. They come today, they disappear tomorrow but in between they take away all our time, energy and vitality. They leave us with no energy. Like you could go for a marathon and come back. You obviously were tired. I mean, most of them will have to be carried back after the marathon to their rooms. But then what? You drink some energy drinks and eat your food. By afternoon, you are back to your senses. Likewise, this one, Indriyas. Indriyas are very, very bad. Why? Because they distract you like anything. And then what happens? They haranti. How? With force, they say, they steal your attention away from Brahman, these Indriyas. And how they come? Kama, Krodha, Udbhavam, Vegam. Quickly they come and catch you. One moment you miss your attention on Brahman, they come and overtake everything. They are always waiting on the side to catch hold of your mind and all your attention. That strong are these Indriyas. But know that these Indriyas come and go. 
you think the indriyas themselves which are not permanent they can give you permanent joy this body itself which is not permanent you think it can give you permanent joy it comes and goes udaya asta so you think you are going to be happy using this body and appeasing your senses forget it it's not going to happen and what is ulta going to happen sarvendriyanam jaryanti teja the more you indulge with your indriyas in the world and enjoying the pleasures of the world shabda sparsha rupa rasa gandha maitunan cha what will happen you will lose all your energy like now after little fever and this virus attack you have lost lot of energy and you are very dull same thing will happen to those who are spending all their energy in doing things of the indriyas there is no energy left to pursue brahman that's why nayam atma balahi ne na labhya for weak people this atman is not to be realized it's only for the dhiras who know how to keep control on their mind and senses so that is the thing and then he says pratyak pruthak utpadya mana naam matva dhiro na shochati see all these indriyas are different in nature and together also they are different from the atman look at eyes see they cannot smell nose smells it cannot taste tongues taste they cannot hear ears hear they cannot see even every indriya by themselves are different different in nature and together all these indriyas are also different from the atman this is the idea prithak udyamana naam they are born differently originate separately how each has their own limited powers no indriya can do all the five things each indriya has been given their limited powers with these limited indriyas which are born separately and they are separate from atman you think you can realize atman through these indriyas which do cannot even eyes cannot even smell taste or touch or hear all it can do is to see with these kind of indriyas which are so limited in nature which come and go and you get so carried away by their perceptions you think you will realize that brahman is not possible so indriyas are not the way to realize brahman because indriyas themselves are born differently from brahman and each indriya by itself is born different from the other so they have very limited powers they have very limited in their strengths and however nevertheless they are good enough to drain you of all your energies all all your pursuit of brahman so knowing this that indriyas are not the truth knowing that indriya sukha is not the ultimate sukha knowing that all this is not real brahman alone is real the one who thinks like that such a person matva dhiro na shochati that dhira who has discriminated indriyas are not truth indriyas are born separately and they have their own separate existence with their separate faculties brahman is different the one who realizes dhira na shochati never comes to any grief why because he never indulges in that which is not necessary yachet vang manasi pragya tad yachet gyanam atmani this is the reason why that shloka is so powerful and important withdraw your indriyas and mind how kurba ganiva samharate yada like how a tortoise withdraws its limbs when it sees danger coming withdraws and how quickly you have to withdraw kama krodh udbhavam vegam very quickly they come this kama krodh and all these indriya prabhavas so immediately you have to withdraw and this has to be practiced begins there when you are able to withdraw your indriyas pratyahara then only spiritual progress begins otherwise all your time energy will first get lost in appeasing the indriyas which you cannot control and then the rest of the life in the guilt that you have appeased the indriyas now what's the use so this is why it says the indriyas have to be kept under control and knowing very well that this body made of indriyas is not brahman this is the manifestation of this an instrument but don't get entangled there and knowing this the one who lives the life in the pursuit of brahman never comes to any grief this is the idea so how many ideas we saw just now we saw the idea that the whole jagat is nothing but like the tree which grows from brahman but binds us to the world so what should i do i am a dhira i am a person who is, has discrimination so asanga shastra na drinena chitva go up and cut off these roots with firmness with conviction with courage don't slowly do it do it at once don't wait for another day it won't come who knows and then it went on to say if you think that um, you can do it later is not possible while you are in this body only do it because after that you will end up in some other lokas like pitru loka gandharva loka and those lokas are not the right lokas to realize brahman and even if you end up in brahma loka where you can 
understand Brahman, the amount of effort you'll have to put to reach Brahma Loka, as well you put that effort now to realize Brahman in this Loka here itself. Why do you need to wait for so long? So think this way and also realize that Indriyas which you think is the reality and all you think you'll be happy with these Indriya, Indriya Sukha, know for sure that this is all illusion, this is not Brahman. With that we cannot attain Brahman. The only way is withdraw the Indriyas. Withdraw the mind into buddhi and buddhi into the higher buddhi, discriminating buddhi and through that sukshma buddhi, agraya buddhi, realize the truth of Brahman is the clarion call of these Upanishads that don't waste time. That's why the time waste is life waste. Now the next shloka is very similar to the earlier shloka. So this is like the yache dvang manasi shloka. So let us go through that. It says, Indriyebhya param mano manasah sattvam uttamam sattva dadi mahan atma mahato avyakta muttamam Next look also. Avyaktaaktu paras purusho vyapako alingam evacha yam gyatva muchyate jantuhu amrutatvam chagachati So it's similar like Indriyebhya parahi artha arthebhya param manaha manasastu parabuddhi buddhe jnanam atmani jnanam atmani mahatam paraha That eight step we saw. So similar idea. It says Indriyebhya Param Mano. Compared to the Indriyas, mind is subtler and the greater. And above mind, Manasa Sattva Muttamam. Sattva means Sattva Buddhi. From your mind, which is only the collection of data for the Indriyas. Buddhi which analyzes this data. If it's Sattva Buddhi, then it is Uttamam. Suppose it is Rajo Buddhi or Tamo Buddhi, no Uttamam. Sattva Uttamam, if you have the Sattva Buddhi to realize real and unreal, Nitya Nitya, that is Sattva Buddhi, that is better than that. Sattva Dadi Mahanatma and this uh, greater than that, superior to this Sattva Buddhi is what? Mahan Buddhi, which is the Hirandigarbha Buddhi, like we say that, which is the cosmic consciousness, the mind of the God. It knows better than our individual thinking. It means don't think about your individual think, collective society way, which is better than your selfish individual thinking. Think selflessly is what it's saying. So Mahanatma, Mahato Avyaktam Uttamam. Above Hiranyagarbha is Ishwara. He is unmanifest Brahman only. Why is unmanifest? Because he has not yet shown his power, his potential energy. It has not shown a kinetic aspect. So Ishwara is thinking but not created yet. So avyaktam is greater than the Hiranyagarbha, we know that. And avyakta to para purusham. Above Ishwara is the ultimate purusha, who is Brahman himself, para Brahman. Because Ishwara is the avyakta Brahman. Hiranyagarbha is the vyakta Brahman. Hiranyagarbha or virata, whichever way you call it. So somebody asked me this question. Hiranyagarbha is in sukshma, avyakta or vyakta? I said it is at the doorstep. Neither it is vyakta nor it is avyakta. Because if it becomes Vyakta, it will become Virata with all the faculties. And if it becomes Avyakta, it will be Ishwara. It's at the, in the middle, like the cusp of both. Important is to know that beyond that is the Parabrahman. Avyakta Brahman is Ishwara. Beyond that is the Parabrahman. Is it Vyakta? Is it Avyakta? We cannot say. It is. Asti, iti. That's all it is. So that is why it says, Vyapako, it is everywhere. In everything, in every aspect of this creation, it is there. But how it is alingaha? Is there a sign? Is there a pointer towards it? Is there any quality through which I can know it? That it is black in color, or it is white in color, or it is sweet, or it is sour, it is large, or it is small. Lingam means a chinha, a symbol. Is there anything that points towards it? Anything that looks like it? A lingam. Nothing is like it. So, evacha, that is the truth of that ultimate. Yam gyatva, the one who comes to know of it. Muchyate jantuhu. From this birth of a jantu, muchyate, he has redeemed himself. And amrutattvam he gachati and attains what? That immortal parabrahman only attains. This birth and death and then again and again going through this cycle comes to an end. This is the idea. Shankaracharya says in our Viveka Chudamadi, very, very powerful shloka is there. So in the shloka, in Shakracharya's Viveka Chudamani, he starts only with this Jantu Nam Narajanma Durlabham. That is the first shloka. After his tuti to his guru, he says, of all the beings, which is 84 lakh species is what our Upanishads, Vedas say, human birth is the rarest of the rare. 
and then he goes on to say in the second shloka manushyatvam mamukshatvam mahapurusha samshraya these three if you get you are very very lucky it's god's grace that you have got all the three manushyatvam you have got of all the animal species mamukshatvam you have got the desire to attain moksha and mahapurusha samshraya a company of a noble one you have got because only being a human wanting to know brahman is not enough somebody has to teach you how to go about it how to realize that brahman otherwise you will be simply you know going in circles without proper guidance so it's so important and the third shloka he says labdhva katham chin nar janma durlabham somehow you have by hook or crook you have attained the human birth labdhva katham chin nar janma durlabham the rarest of the human birth you have somehow acquired then tatrapi in that also pumsatvam shruti paradarshanam in that also you have attained the male birth and shruti paradarshanam you have understood darshanam means you have understood all the philosophy and shruti the entire philosophy of the vedas you have understood on the girl side will say why this male birth why they are not saying stristam why pumsatvam in those days this knowledge of vedas were available to only men women were not allowed to go to vedic schools and colleges for a long time this was the culture so when shankaracharya was writing this obviously the culture was when women were not given much importance in for average women were not given much importance like that ubaya bharati was there who was uh, equal to shankara in our debate so like that there were those gargis maitreyis and people like that but for average women the access to brahma gyana access to vedanta vedas was very very difficult that's why he said that you are not born a woman you are born a man shankaracharya was born around that time 800 900s time so for most 1400 years before and in that time the social structure was such that women were not getting an opportunity to even go to gurukulas or learn para vidya like that not they could just walk away from the home and become sanyasins everybody couldn't become akamaha devi or meera bai look at what difficulty meera bai and akamaha devi had to go through so you cannot compare so that is why he said that men born as hum- first of all human being on top of that born as a man he on top of that having learned vedas and got access to the shruti darshana and then what after all this thing yastvatma muktav na yate ta mudadihi that person who for his own liberation does not put effort that foolish fellow how is his situation sahi atmaha swam vinihatya sadrahat that person is how as if he is committing his own death means he is committing suicide if you are born as a human being on top of that you have learned upanishads that to cut upanishads one of the gem of the upanishads after this also if you don't put any efforts to liberate yourself we will do it tomorrow after 10 years that fool mudadi sahyatmaha swam that person is on his own by his own effort vinihantya sadrahat killing his own self this is the story same thing says ishavasi upanishad is andham prama pravishanti surya naam te loka andhena tamasa vrata tam pretya vi gachanti ye ke ch atmahano jana he says they enter the world called asurya naam loka where sura means deities or gods asurya means demons no they are tortured by all the demons kama krodha lobha moha madha matsara they enter such a world which is covered in darkness andena tamasa avrita blinding darkness andena blinding darkness tamasa darkness avrita covered by it tan te pretya bi gachanti after dying then they comes pretas pitrulokas they enter such worlds because of their bad deeds who ek ech atmahano jana who has committed their own murder it means who have committed suicide it means who have not put effort on the spiritual path they enter a world so dark blinding dark and they suffer there and they tortured by the demons asuras why because they have not realized brahman so after having got a human birth and the birth of somebody who has got an access to this education and understanding after that also if you don't put an effort to realize brahman you are such a fool who has committed suicide this is the equivalent of what it has been spoken in other places i wanted to bring it to your notice because here katopanishad is trying to emphasize on that point that please don't take it easy 
Don't take it lightly. If you must realize Brahman, it is now and here. Not after you retire. Not after everybody has kicked you out of the home and now you have to go and find a shelter in some Rishi Muni's ashram. Not when your deathbed cancer has come, now I want to realize Brahman quickly. Why? I don't know. Not like that. Here and now, when you are young, healthy, hale and hearty, this is the right time, right opportunity, right place. That is why I told some time back. If not here, then where? If not now, then when? If not this way, then in which way? Are you going to realize Brahman? The time is now, the place is this, the way is this. Upanishads, Vedanta. This is the time and this is the place. And if this does not happen here, now and in this way, nowhere, anytime, in any other way, it can be achieved. So this is the best of the thing, the, after many, many Shatajanma Punya Krutaihi Vina, I says, unless you have done crores of Punyas for hundred births, you don't get this opportunity, Viveka Chudamani says. So with all these coming together, we must be very serious about spiritual progress, we must be very bent upon realizing ourselves. After that, Matva Dhiro Na Shochati, there will be never a sorrowful moment in your life. Always Nandati Nandati Nandatyeva, always you are busy, always you are happy, in bliss. Atma Krida, Atma Rati Kriyavan, Esham Brahma Vidam Varishta. You become the best of the Brahma Gyanis. Why? All the time in your bliss of the self. But also acting, you are also working, you are also studying, you are also teaching, administering. Yet within yourself, you are busy enjoying that state of Brahman. Activities are happening only outside. Like the waves are playing on the surface, deep down in the ocean there is absolute calm. You will master this art. This is really the art of living. How to live a life that within you are absolutely calm and peaceful and grounded. Without, you are busy. Very, very busy. Both should happen. This kind of life you must lead is the idea of the Upanishads. It seems once it so happened that one person heard that Janaka was a Brahma Jnani. And uh, he came to meet Janaka to understand how does he manage this whole kingdom at the same time remains established in this idea of Brahman. So like this, somebody came to Janaka's palace, some guru, and he said, I want to understand how do you manage this entire place and yet not be disturbed? How did you do it? How do you do it? So he said, no, no, we will discuss that later. Come, let's have some lunch. You have come. Any Brahmana or Atiti Grihand, anybody who comes, I must feed him. I must respect him. So he calls. Okay, he says. So when he, they are serving the food to this Brahmin, what this uh, Janaka does is he hangs a sword with a very thin thread like of a hair. Um, the mane of the horse or the tail of the horse has the hair. With that hair he hands a heavy uh, sword right on the neck of this Brahmin and says, eat, eat, eat like that he says. <laughs> the food is very interesting. Raja Bhoga it is. Where will this poor monk will get such nice food unless he comes to a palace of Janaka? Janaka has served him all Bhakshya Bhojas. He says, eat, eat peacefully. Can he eat peacefully with that sword hanging on his neck? Any time it can fall. <laughs> and he's eating and eating because the king has told he cannot refuse. He's hungry too. He's eating and eating, eating. After the food gets over, he says, so how was the lunch? He said, what lunch? I don't even know what I've eaten. <laughs> Why? Was the food not good? He said, food was good or not, I don't even realize why, because I, my mind was always on the sword which is hanging on top of my neck. <laughs> when it will fall and when I am done. And you are the king, I can't even talk back. Out of fear I was eating something, but I ate khara or I ate sihi uh, or I ate uh, papad or I ate puri, I don't know what I have done. Then Janaka said, this is how I lead my life. Knowing that death is hanging any time on my neck. Any time I can lose my this thing, I keep all my attention on that Brahman who is beyond death, who is beyond birth and I go on doing. So, it means I am doing everything without getting attached to anything. Like somebody who is having a sword hanging on the neck, cannot enjoy the food. Oh, this is sweet. Give me one more cup of pie. Somebody ask. He will say the earlier I finish the food and vanish, the better it is. <laughs> he is not going to demand second helping, third helping. Like that remember, Harate Nimishat Kala Sarvam. Kala is always, the Kala Khadga is hanging on your neck. Any moment it can drop. 
So don't waste your time. Remember that Brahman alone is real, Jagan Mithya, and whatever you have got to do in this world, be it teaching, learning, and playing, and administering, do it as it comes, without getting involved. Like this man cannot get involved with the food. So Janaka teaches him a practical lesson, Bodha, that this is how you must lead your life in the world, always mindful that death is inevitable and I must realize Brahman before such a day comes, body drops away. So how can I enjoy all these things? How can I enjoy pleasures of the senses? How can I enjoy? It's not possible. I may do it because I must do it. But beyond that, can I get involved and entangled in them? Not possible. So like that one has to be mindful of time, mindful of the opportunity, mindful of all that Brahman has brought your way for you to realize. And not get too entangled in your Indriya and Indriyarthas. Then you have lost the whole thing. Then what will happen instead of finishing his food, he would be asking second helping, third helping and sometime that thread will snap. So that is the idea, live in this world but let not the world live in you. Let the boat be in water, let not the water come inside the boat. This is the secret of living. Only a Brahma Jnani can live like this. Let there be a storm, let there be calm, doesn't matter. Every time he is able to take things as it comes. So this is a very, very important thing. Only Brahma Jnanis can live in this world and not let the world live in them. All others will get sunk. That is the Bhava Sagara, they go inside. Why? Because they have forgotten. That is why Shurasya Dhara Nishta Duratya. All the time you have to be mindful that Brahman realization is alone the truth. All this is false. And you make a mistake, get entangled with your senses and mind. Shurasya Dhara. You are walking on the razor's edge. So it will cut you into two. So being mindful, merge your Indriyas and Indriya Arthabhyas into mind and take the mind. Merge into Buddhi means without Buddhis saying, without buddhi's command, the mind and indriyas should not behave. And this buddhi you merge it into the higher buddhi, at least individual consciousness, me, I, myself, from there, us, ours, higher buddhi. Let, for everybody's sake, let us do things, not for my sake. And from there, the highest buddhi is what? Let God's sake only everything happen. It's not about me, it's not even about you, it's about what Brahman and God wants. And leave it at that and behave accordingly. Everything will be perfect. Nothing is imperfect in God's creation. Everything is perfect. Like the apple is perfect on the tree and pumpkin is perfect on the ground. Everything is perfect. Nothing to worry, nothing to... Because he is standing with his sword up. Mahat bhayam. Very scary he is. You think anybody can misbehave in front of him including Mrityu? Mrityu dhavadi panchama. I am the fifth one who runs. At, with his fear says Mrityu himself. You think anything can happen if you are established in this thought of Brahman? Should he lead life like those rats and um, uh, insects scared of their death all the time? Ahara nidra bhai maituna. Keep going in the same circle. You are greater than that. You are Brahman. Realizing that, be fearless and be cheerful at all the times. A, B, C. Always be cheerful. This is what it is. How can I be cheerful always, Swami? So many problems in life. No problems are there. All this is design of Brahman. We have not learnt our lessons. So he keeps putting some new, new tests and challenges and problems. If we have become adept at it, we will not even see it as a problem. We will just walk through it peacefully without realizing. Prahalada never felt any problem. His father was putting so many problems. Prahalada never cried and said, do this, do that. Even Narayana Mantram, Narayana Bhajanam, what else he chanted? Nothing. So no problem is a problem for a Brahma Jnani. Every problem is, a, is an experience. It's a lesson. That's how one thinks and moves on. Whereas a normal person, a Brahma Jnani, a Jnani, he will shiver and shudder at every little thing in life. And most of the world lives in fear. That's why I say bhayam, bhayam, bratuku bhayam. Every small thing they're afraid, they're afraid. Such lowly, miserable lives they lead in that Brahma. So be Brahman and be fearless. That is the message of Upanishads.